Thank you for your time. This is the first video in a series of eight at this Easter season. This is a very significant week in history. Christians know this week as Easter or the Passion Week, the week that ultimately showed us how deep and how passionate the Savior's love for us really was. You know, Jews celebrate this week as Passover week. They reflect on their history when they were in bondage in Egypt as slaves. One night, each Jewish family sacrificed a lamb to be sheltered from the judging hand of God as he swept through Egypt and powerfully liberated the Jews after 400 years of brutal slavery. I am a Christian, and when I read my Bible and think of the final week leading up to the crucifixion of my Savior, I must tell you, my heart is touched. Is yours? On Friday of this week, 33 AD, the Lord Jesus Christ was nailed to a cross. His pain must have been excruciating. The shame of his rejection and hanging on a cross, exposed to the staring, mocking eyes of enemies, must have been deeply humiliating. But despite his suffering, Jesus cried from the cross seven times and made seven final statements before he died. No last words are memorable when they come from the lips of anyone. But the one who hung on the middle cross was none less than the Son of God, God in human flesh. Today, I want you to think of the first statement he made from the cross that Friday morning. And here it is. Luke 23, verse 34. It's what it says. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Earlier in the week on Sunday, he approached the city of Jerusalem riding on a donkey. Centuries earlier, Zechariah, a prophet of God, he wrote, Rejoice greatly, O Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey. That's Zechariah 9, verse 9. That Sunday, the crowds waved palm branches and chanted Hosanna. We know that Sunday to be Palm Sunday. They spread their coats on the ground as Jesus rode on a donkey to the brow of the Mount of Olives. And he looks at the city of Jerusalem below, the city that would condemn him to death. The Bible records that at that point, while he looked over the city, Jesus wept for Jerusalem. Yes, it was so privileged to have the Messiah himself, Jesus of Nazareth, walking on its streets, teaching in their city. But ultimately, they would not accept him as their Christ. There was nothing in his heart but love for them. Every day, he reached out to those who were marginalized. He knew what the city would do to him just days later, but there was no hostility, there was no animosity in his heart, no desire to seek revenge, just sorrow that they wouldn't embrace him and acknowledge him as the Lord from heaven, their Messiah. And that was Sunday, March the 29th, 33 AD. By Friday of that same week, Jesus would be spiked to the cross, bleeding, spit all over his face, thorns piercing into his forehead, beard torn off his face, and his first cry from the cross as he hung there was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What do you think of those words? What kind of a heart would ever produce such a thought in the midst of intense, agonizing pain? Who would ever pray such a prayer while experiencing humiliating, despicable mockery and shame? And yet, from this rejected one, Jesus, comes this prayer, Father, 
forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus taught his disciples to love their enemies and do good to those that hated them. And that's exactly what he was doing on the cross. His heart is no different today. People in an outburst of rage, they blaspheme his lovely name. They mix his lovely name with every curse word that they know. So many have no time for him, even this Easter. But thank you for having sufficient interest to listen. Though they have no time for him, yet he loves them and he's willing to save them from their sins and give them total, unconditional, and complete forgiveness if they will repent of their sins and turn to him. Are you willing to reciprocate his love this Easter? If you discovered that he loved you and died for your sins upon the cross, this could be the brightest day of your life. We know that the majority of people in AD 33, what they did with Christ. But as I end this first segment of this eight-part series, what will you do with the Lord Jesus Christ? Thank you for listening and watching.